Three, two, one. Ooh. Today I'm going to teach you different techniques of how to fly using VFX. Let's get started. All right, let's jump into it. I'm going to show you how to fly using After Effects for these six shots right here. And this shot is my absolute favorite, but we're gonna save this one for last. Now, I know what you're thinking. This isn't flying, this is falling with style. So that being said, shot number one, I'm calling this first shot the takeoff, also known as the CW flight. You can use this technique to extend the height that somebody is jumping or falling. And there is countless examples of this from other VFX artists on social media. You guys ready? Don't try this at home. Here we go. For this first sequence, we set up the camera in front of these two trampolines, and I had Austin and Nate synchronize the timing for their bouncing. The story is they double bounce me so high that I go shooting into the sky. All right, let's jump into it. This shot really only involves two elements. One is a clean plate behind me, and then the second part is animating me up out of the frame. Now, unfortunately for the shot, I am a little bit out of focus, but we're gonna work with what we got. To create the clean plate, I'm gonna find the frame where I'm furthest down in the video, and then bring that over to Photoshop. And using the generative fill feature, I'm going to select myself and remove me from the background. For the foreground trampoline though, I'm gonna find a frame where I'm above the trampoline, and I'm going to use this freeze frame for the video. With these two elements together, we have our clean plate. The next thing we need to do is roto myself out of the shot. With roto brush, you simply just paint yourself out and let it track forward and make any adjustments as needed by either removing or adding parts that it's missing. Now that I'm happy with the roto, I'm gonna go ahead and freeze it. Now this next part is probably the most fun where I get to just play with the animation of lowering myself as far into the shot as I want to and then having myself spring up. For the keyframes for this, I love playing inside of the graph editor so I can best utilize the interpolation to really have the feeling of a spring being held down and then releasing. I'm also gonna roto out the foreground and the front pad of the trampoline because that part shouldn't change much, if anything at all. I'm gonna use the puppet warp tool to have the base shape and then one at its highest peak and then one at its lowest valley. All right, now I'm going over to DaVinci Resolve. Finally, I'm gonna add a color grade, chromatic aberration, and some film grain. Here's that first shot. On to shot number two. I'm calling this one the Christopher Reeve Superman. You've got me, who's got you? Which isn't super fair to the movie because they had some really innovative technology for some of their flight scenes, including the use of motion control and rear projection. Now for this shot, we had the camera set up on a tripod and a green screen popped out behind me. I also had my brother shooting a leaf blower at full blast at me. Now this is the only dialogue shot for this video and because of the volume of the leaf blower, I went ahead and did ADR after the fact for it. How to fly using VFX! Now! Okay, let's jump into the edit. First, I'm gonna use Roto Brush once again to cut myself out. This was relatively easy since I stayed mostly within the green. Now, the only reason I'm using Roto Brush and not just starting with the key is because there's a few moments that my hair and my hands go outside of the edges of the green. Now that the Roto is complete, I'm gonna freeze it and follow a similar procedure where I add composite brush for keying and an instance of key cleaner at the end. For this shot, I'm gonna need a static image of clouds for the background. For this, I'm going to Production Crate, which not only has my favorite library of stock VFX, but has a bunch of other things as well, including sky graphics. In here, I found a cloudscape that looked the most like the background of when we shot. This one will do. So I'm gonna drag this background into the shot and I'm gonna animate it moving down ever so slightly. That's because these clouds are supposed to be far away in the distance. I'm also gonna use these VFX stock assets with the clouds moving sideways. I'm gonna bring them into After Effects, turn them 90 degrees, and on this background one, I'm gonna add motion tile to extend the shot to fill the scene. I'm then gonna speed it up just a little bit and put this behind the layer of me. I'm now gonna remove the motion tile and scale up the clouds so they're a little bit larger and put it in front of me. I'm also gonna speed this one up quite a bit as well. And here is what that looks like. It's already looking pretty good. That's pretty good. But I'm also gonna add some extra clouds in the background just to add even more depth to the shot and then color grade them to match the background. Now I'm gonna animate these ones a little bit faster than that background image so there's a bit of parallax in the shot. With all that together, I'm now gonna use my phone to film this jacket behind me to get some realistic motion for the shot. I don't know what I was doing with my knees there. I'm gonna bring this into After Effects, track it with Mocha AE, and then apply the position and rotation data to a null that I'll parent our footage to. And with all that together, here's shot number two. Today I'm gonna to teach you different techniques of how to fly using VFX. Okay, on to the next shot, which is, actually, what is the next shot? What's the next shot for my flight VFX video? 
Okay, it's the shot where the camera's above my head. Here we go. Actually, before we jump into that shot, let me first introduce you to Notion AI, today's sponsor. Notion is- oh. Wait, I don't think you're gonna skip this one. <sighs> Enjoy. Notion is so much more than another note-taking app. Imagine having a digital workspace that not only organizes your workflow, but also thinks alongside you. That's exactly what the new Notion AI is. Check this out. I've created this team space that everyone in my company has access to. It has all of our tasks, projects, and deadlines. Now at any given moment, I can simply ask Notion AI a question like, what's the most pressing deadline right now? Notion then gathers all the relevant data for me in a way that's easy to read. It can even connect to other apps like Slack and Google Drive. That way, you can pull information you may need from those other sites. But here's where it gets wild. Notion AI uses knowledge models like Claude and GPT-4. This means you can ask it to summarize everything to catch you up or create a prioritized to-do list. And it does this faster than you can say something really fast. Actually, let me show you a really cool trick. Let's say I wanna watch a tutorial about water simulations in Blender, but I don't wanna waste an hour watching this video, especially if it doesn't have what I'm looking for. I can actually copy that video's transcript and post it into Notion. Then, using Notion AI, I can get this video summarized to see if it touches on the topic I wanna know about. This saves so much time. I can't tell you how many tutorials I've watched through to get to the other end of the video to find it didn't actually talk about what I needed. If you're ready to take full advantage of this and all the other awesome tools that Notion has to offer, get started today for free and unlock the new Notion AI for only $10 a month using the link in my description. Your future self will thank you. Now back to the video. Shot number three, above the head. Also calling it the Adam Warlock shot. For this shot, we're gonna put the green screen on the ground and I'm gonna stand on it. Then we're gonna pull up the bench and have Austin stand on that with the leaf blower while Nate holds the camera as high as he can. Uh, oh, oh, the cord popped out when you did that. Whoa. On action, he descends the camera until it's right over my head. Now, we're gonna use After Effects Camera Tracker to 3D track this shot. I'm gonna cut myself out using Roto Brush, Composite Brush, and Advanced Spill Suppressor. Now I'm going to Google Earth to screenshot some images of a random neighborhood from different heights so I can zoom out later. Starting with the widest image, I set the rest to half opacity so I can align them using scale position and rotation, ending with the image of the trampolines. Then I parent them from the smallest to the largest image. Next, I'm gonna add a knoll that is the master control for zooming out. I parent the last clip to this knoll and set two keyframes for the most zoomed in at the beginning and zooming out as far as I can for the last keyframe. Then selecting both, I'm gonna right click and set to exponential scale. Now I'm gonna make this video layer 3D and put it far, far beneath me and scale it up. Back at Production Crate, they have this one asset of clouds flying towards camera. This will work perfectly in reverse. Now I'm gonna make this layer 3D as well and place it behind me in 3D space. I'm then going to duplicate it and put another version of it in front of me. Now I'm gonna create a solid layer and add an instance of fractal noise. I'm also gonna set this layer to screen and put it behind everything except for the background layer. I'm gonna set it to cloudy and soft linear and add some contrast and pull back some of the brightness. Now I'm gonna animate the offset turbulence so it looks like the clouds are drifting ever so slightly. I'm gonna animate the scale under the transform controls to make it look like we're moving further and further away from the clouds. Now I'm gonna add an instance of tint to my background layer so the further I get from it, the more atmosphere is between me and the ground. I'm gonna add an adjustment layer and add an instance of CC lens to distort the edges. And I'll animate the distortion so it's the most intense towards the end of the clip. Finally, I'm gonna add some camera lens blur to the background, chromatic aberration, film grain, and here are the results. Shot number four, into the heavens. This shot is very similar to the previous one with a few differences. It's all up from here. Thanks. So for this video, I'm sitting on a bench, green screen behind me, and I'm gonna be laying down like this, and we're gonna act as if the footage is going vertically into the sky. Nate then uses the gimbal to dolly in closer to me from below my feet. Now jumping into the edit, we're gonna go about the shot just like we did the previous one. First, we're gonna 3D track the shot. Then we're gonna cut me out. And to make it look like I'm proceeding through the clouds to the blue sky, I started with a different background image from Production Crate. I'm gonna place this background sky far from the camera. I'm also reusing that same asset of the clouds moving towards the camera, but this time I don't need to time reverse it. One version below me and one version above me. I'm then gonna randomly place these clouds throughout the 3D scene. Now, with all the layers assembled, I'm gonna pre-compose every layer below me into the background comp and my layer and anything above me into the foreground comp. I'm then gonna run both of these through Red Giant Super Comp, which gives you the ability to add normal compositing elements in a really easy to use way where all these effects play together properly. For the foreground, I'm gonna add an instance of light wrap, volumetric fog to have those really intense shadows from above, haze, and a little bit of diffusion. And now I'm gonna add some color correction and here are those results. And now shot five, the pinnacle. 
For this shot, I'm acting as if I'm hitting the pinnacle of my launch, and then I begin to descend back down to earth. And so that's why you're seeing this sort of curling motion I'm doing. And that's also why Austin runs from one side of the shot with the leaf blower to the other to simulate me going up through the sky and then proceeding to go back down. Now bringing this clip into After Effects, the first thing we're gonna do is roto me out. And having a complicated background, this is proving to be the hardest one to cut with roto brush. The hand is giving me major problems, why are you the way that you are? So I'm gonna let it go and then make a new roto specifically for the hand. Okay, done. I'm gonna add a sky texture from Production Crate. I thought this one had a beautiful horizon line and we may need that for later. We're now gonna make this in the layer of me 3D. Now I'm gonna add a 3D camera to the scene and set keyframes for the position so I can have it dollying in on me. We're gonna place this background layer far into the distance and scale it up. And then for the layer of me, I'm going to animate the position and the rotation separately. I'm gonna start myself low in the shot. Then towards the middle of the video, I'm gonna make sure that I'm pretty close to center frame. And before the shot's over, I'm gonna make sure that I'm animated out of the frame. Now I'm gonna jump into the graph editor. We're gonna start with the velocity really intense at the beginning, easing into a halt in the middle, and then easing out back into a fast descend after. That brief pause in the middle kinda of helps it have a cartoonish feeling. Now going back to textures.com, I'm gonna find some really awesome background clouds for the scene. I'm gonna bring them into the composition, set them to 3D, and then color correct them to match the background layer. Once again, I'm gonna reuse the clouds from Production Crate and set these to more of the foreground clouds, scattering them until it looks really nice. I'm gonna create a 3D null, parent the camera to it, and this null is exclusively responsible for vertically raising the camera. Nice. Now we're gonna bring those two assets of flying through the clouds in once again, starting with the one where the clouds are falling down the shot and then fading it out, then fading in the shot of the clouds moving towards the camera. While in Production Crate, I actually grabbed these birds as well, and I'm gonna make them a 3D layer and throw them into the background. Now with all the elements complete, I'm gonna add chromatic aberration, film grain, and a final color grade, and here are those results. And now finally on to shot number six, which is my personal favorite. This one is inspired by the original Star Wars movies where they would have the model suspended in the air and they would have the camera proceed to rotate around the object with a motion controlled rig. They would do this to simulate the idea of the object moving through space. We're gonna simulate this outside the warehouse with nothing but a stool and a leaf blower. Nate takes the camera on a gimbal and orbits around me as smoothly as possible. And obviously he's going much slower than the shot will end up being in the final result, so I did my best to try to act at kind of like a half speed. I then took out my drone and sent it up about 30 to 40 feet above the ground, while I simultaneously also tilted the camera up from the ground to the sky. Obviously this motion's a little slow, so it also will be time remapped in After Effects. Cut. With these two clips, I brought them into the same composition. I then got the timing for the base clip along with the timing for the plate of myself as well. I set the opacity to 50% so I could kind of see generally how it's gonna play over the trampoline shot. I'm gonna first track the shot in Mocha AE. We're actually gonna be tracking this to stabilize the shot. So I'm gonna make a mask around my body and I'm going to set it to just position, scale, and rotation. Back in After Effects, I'm gonna invert this tracking data. Now I'm going to apply it to the null and scale up the shot so it takes up most of the frame for the entire duration and pre-compose it. Using Roto Brush once again, I'm gonna cut myself out. Now for the fun part. I'm going to be playing with the animation of the position, scale, and rotation of myself, so I start just a little bit bigger than the other guys near the trampoline, and then as I pass the camera, I'm gonna go ahead and add an instance of directional blur to the background, as well as the asset of myself. I ended up only having three sets of keyframes in total, and messing around with the graph editor to get the right interpolation worked super well. I then went ahead and color corrected the shot of me so they matched as closely as possible. And here's the result. <laughs> Well, that's it for this video. If you want to see a more in-depth breakdown of any of the shots in this video, make sure you check out my Patreon where I'm sharing in-depth versions of these tutorials. That's so cool. Comment down below what other kind of VFX videos you'd like me to tackle, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.